a new era in competitive mini golf. Oh, past the hole, and he has got it. Oh my goodness. He reaches over with his left hand and blocks the seat belt of Davidson. Oh, oh, Network, creating, developing, and bringing niche sports to market. PLN has produced some of the most viral, bettable content in recent years, and we're just getting started. Join us tonight for this special combat sports edition of PLN Picks. We've got something for everyone, and you can bet on it. Tonight, we will watch as these two competitors compete in three PLN sports. The first is Guerrilla Games. Two competitors place themselves head to head in planked position, separated by the line of scrimmage. Each player must topple his opponent without touching any part of his body in his opponent's area of play. Competitors must maintain plank position or face penalty. At the end of a 60 second round, the player with the most takedowns wins the round. The winner of two out of three rounds wins the match. All right, are you ready for the first match? Yeah! Okay, introducing the first opponent. Over here we have Raven James from Branson, Missouri. He will be going against Rusty Merrill from Grove, Oklahoma. Your lead official, Nate Pulver. All right, gentlemen, step forward. Take your positions. On your knuckles. And we're off. Oh, right away, Raven reaches for the wrist, overextends, and scores a point on himself. Then Outlaw with an arm drag. It's now 2-0 Outlaw. Raven attempts an arm drag, but lowers his own elbow to the mat. And now Rusty with a three-point lead. One of the things you'll notice about Guerrilla Games is that these competitors are not allowed to attack the elbow. They can grab the wrist, the forearm, the tricep, the shoulder, but never the elbow. We're 30 seconds into round one. It's 3-2 Outlaw. Little bit of push and pull going on here. Nice arm drag attempt. Oh, and then Raven puts his hand down on the wrong side of the line, and it's now 4-2 Outlaw. 15 seconds remaining. Couple of warnings here from the officials that Outlaw is putting his fingers across the line. That's not allowed. It's actually just cost him a point here. 4-3 with three seconds left. Looks like Outlaw's gonna win the round here. Oh, an arm drag by Raven puts us in sudden death. It's 4-4 tied and the next point wins. And holy smokes, Raven steals it with an arm drag. That first round goes to Raven, five to four. All right, we do have a winner for the first round. It is Raven James. We'll take a quick 30 second break. Catch your breath, guys, catch your breath. We're going right back at it in 30 seconds. All right, let's take a look at some of the action from the first round. The first thing you'll notice when you see these competitors in dogfight position is that they always keep their rear end the same level or lower than their head. That's a prerequisite at Guerrilla Games and you can see that that makes it very, very difficult to extend and reach for attacks. Now, these guys went for a lot of arm drags, a lot of wrist slapping. I uh, didn't see anybody grab up underneath the armpit or the tricep, but this is each competitor's first time in Guerrilla Games, so we'll see what happens in round two. Any positions? How'd you Round two. During the break, Rusty was spoken to by the officials about his fingers crossing over the line of scrimmage. And you can see now uh, that's happening quite a few times. Raven was just awarded a point. Nice arm drag by Outlaw. It's now 1-1. And again, Outlaw's fingers over the line of scrimmage. He's been given another point now. Raven's got the lead 2-1. to one. Nearly halfway through the first round. 
A lot of slapping, a lot of wrist control. Uh, neither competitor coming too far across the line other than Rusty with his fingers. There's another infraction. Three points for Raven. 20 seconds left in round two. If we are even after round two, we will go to an optional third round. Right now, Raven with three points. Outlaw with two points. Oh, and a fantastic slap there. Uh, Outlaw slaps the hand out from underneath Raven, and it's three all with three seconds left. It looks like we're going into sudden death. Sudden death. Oh, and an arm drag by Raven wins it at the buzzer yeah. again. Wow. Two rounds to Raven James. That means we will not go to a third round. Your winner, Raven James. Yeah. All right, come over here, Raven. So you're a pioneer, brother. That's a, that's a first win right there. How do you feel? Pretty good, man. He's tough. We got it done. Good it, stuff. All right, was there anything that surprised you? Because I know this is something you've never done before. Is there, was it harder than you thought? Was there a little trick that you learned? It was a little bit harder than I thought. He had really good pressure, really good pressure on me. Uh, but you figure it out in the moment, so I got it figured out kind of. All right, well, you go take a breather. Good job, man. <laughs> Raven James, your winner. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Raven is the first on the board at the PLN Grappling Challenge. His win at Guerrilla Games has put him in the lead one to zero. The first round was won five points to four by Raven at the buzzer, and the second round won four points to three again at the buzzer. Fantastic performance by Raven, but these two competitors now will need to recover and relax because when we return, they will face each other in the car at Karjitsu Championship. We're back in the booth here, myself, Rafazola, Rufus, Peabody, as we get set up for the first hole and the backyard brawl, as it's been dubbed, between Joey Grable and Mike Rutledge. I think this is going to be a really compelling match because you got two aggressive putters here, uh, and the, specific, the specifics of Rutledge, if we look at his career in putting, the range of outcomes is so high. He has the ability to go extremely low or extremely high, and that just makes this you know, all, all the more exciting. I, I just hope both of these guys bring their A game. I think we're in for a treat. Yeah, absolutely. Rutledge, as I mentioned, has the ability to go low. Shot nine under at the Hawaiian Rumble. And Grable, obviously known for his great form as he had that epic comeback against Gary Hester. We're now going out to hole one as Joey Grable leads us off here at the Tennessee, Tennessee Shine Invitational. Want to keep it quiet there for that first putt. This is... A tricky one. He's playing the bank, Rufus, as a lot of people have been practicing over the course of today. And maybe a little bit of nerves there as he left that one short. That's very unlike Grable to do that. I think he, he realizes the speed of that putt. You barely have to touch it and get it there. But, I mean, look at those pants. He looks like, you know, John Daly and Ian Poulter had a kid together. Absolutely. He's known for being a stylish one as he makes a two there. This is an aceable hole. There are ones on this course that are extremely challenging to ace, but early on here, one, two, uh, are specifics where you can get out to an early start. Th this one is one where I, I kind of expect to see just a bunch of pars. I mean, it's ooh, we have a different strategy here. Oh, we got. He's the going straight. right at it. He is going right at it, and I think he's content to just lag it up there. Yeah, he did. Play it. Uh, ooh, that's he's got a little work left. And yeah. So we, we talked about this in the, in the pregame show here, and for those who watch myself and Rufus play earlier as well, there are many ways to play a lot of these holes. Some of them do have a specific style, but there are ones like number one here where you will see the pros over the course of today play it differently, and they might actually play it differently even in the final round as well as Rutledge solid. makes his two there. Solid, solid putt. Putt. Yep, you can tell the confidence is there as we're all square through one, headed into hole number two. Hole number two here is a testy one, but it's just, you know, just get it down there. It is, and, and the line they're showing there is not the line that I think these golfers are going to use. They're going to line up on the left side and sort of aim it uh, at one of those flowers you see in the middle. Because it's going to be fast, it, 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 and it will turn pretty hard right to left. Absolutely. You can see right now that Joey's lined up. He's going two, two feet, two Joey feet. 
two Joey feet off of the left, and he's going to just die it up there. You see Bet365 live odds up on your screen. Outright winner of the match right now. Grable still favored, minus 250 as he was headed into the match and altogether. Rob, this is the single highest uh, hole-in-one per, per, uh, hole that we will see. This is the most aceable hole. But I think he put it too far up to the left. Yep. Oh, wow. He got No, it. no. Got <laughs> I was wrong. I was wrong. This is why he's the expert. And the crowd is going uh, wild out there as well. But this is one that I think they will want to ace. Like, there will be a disappointment if you do not ace it. Now, Rutledge has uh, has to follow this one here. And again, like you said, Rufus, different lines. But you just kind of have to tap it and get it down there. Yeah, this Rutledge is, has aced this hole in six out of ten events here. So He has a good line, too. He has Could a good we line. Have both? We, we have both. We have a double Look ace. Look at these guys. And hole two, we did have odds on this listed as well in terms of the total number of aces at a lot of the sports books out there. Both of these putters ace hole number two as we move on to hole number three here. And again, multiple lines for this hole. It's going to be very interesting to see how they end up playing this one. Yes, it will. I mean, there's. I, I remember Joey specifically practicing two different putts here to the right, and then and you can go straight at it from the right, or you can use that hill, which um, I, I use the hill on the right, which is uh, the, the strategy Olivia uses. Now, the speed of this putt will have changed over the course of the day as they're completely in the shade now, and this one is out in the sun earlier as well. Uh, but I'm very interested to see how both of these pros line up here and what they decide to go with. It or looks like Joey's going down the left side. It does look like he's going down the left side here. See how that looks. It's going over the old hole. Cutting back. Did he get it? Wow. Oh, my goodness, he got it. And then he did go down the right side. I think we were fooled by the camera angle. We, we were. He missed he it. Went, he, the, he has never aced this hole in competition. Th this is incredible. He was upset when he hit that putt. I, it, it ended up going in the hole. But sometimes he catch breaks, and uh, he's not too proud of that one. He's kind of walking, laughing it off as, as both the, the putters are in front of us here at the uh, Bossy Creek mini golf course here in Jefferson City, Tennessee. Rob, I've always said that the more talented you are, the better luck you get. Yep. And I think that showed. A hundred percent. And, I mean, Grable is known to be a guy that just, I mean, he's able to ace a lot of these holes. Rutledge on the tee here looking to match. He's starting off the left side here. It looks like he's going to try to use that hill. Yep. And he left it out to the right. Oh, no. Which is a mistake. So this oh. is not going to be happy with this putt. You know, he barely escaped that going on the wrong side of the hill. Yep. If you have to go over that hill, it's virtually impossible. Yep. Pulling out his book here as this is a putt that he's probably practiced before, but we don't see too often. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm surprised. I, I would be surprised if he practiced this at all. Uh, I don't think he's used to putting it there. Yep. I think these guys are so good, they're not, they're not missing that much normally. So this is his second here. Testy one. Camera. And he drains it. He drains it. That is a great putt. Gray Bill giving him props there. As uh, That's not one that they practice all too often. Now Rutledge, known for being a great putter. He knocked off Greg Newport 1v1 at the 2021 Putt-Putt Nationals. He's one down here, heading to the fourth hole. And the fourth hole, candidly, a lot of the pros don't like this one. I can see why. I mean, look, there's a 3.5% ace percentage. And, Rob, this shocked me to see this graphic. 41% bogey or worse. You, that, I, that's, is this a misprint? It is not. And the reason it is not is it's really challenging if you don't get the putt down there. You just got to get it down to the lower level. If you don't, you're almost guaranteed a three putt. Olivia's strategy is to kind of wail on it because you want to, that increases your chance of getting it um, Use, being able to use the backstop after the hole. So Gray Beal makes it, makes it, and that's a good spot to hit. That's actually aceable. That looks really good. That looks... Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. 
almost improve that number up to 4% there for aces on, on this hole, but that is an absolutely great putt. He's a little bit upset right now, but I think it's because you rarely actually have a real chance to ace this, and he had the line as he bounces the ball there. Looked like Michael Jordan there with the, those dribbling skills. Rutledge on the tee. This hole has been a bugaboo for Rutledge. He's actually bogeyed it 6 out of 10 times he's played it. So That was at the U.S. Open, which was 10 rounds. Here we are. And he caught it right at the right oh, side. Yeah. Wow, wow. Ooh. And you can just see how difficult it is. Even when it looks like it's online, it's challenging to actually hold it here. I think w w when you look at putts like that, you're like, how are the? How is this hole bogeyed so much? But this putt coming back is no gimme. There's a lot of break around the hole. Yep. And you can see Rutledge right now consulting his charts. He's mapped out this hole, as a lot of the pros have, if not all of them. Uh, but you still got to make the putt. Still got to hit the line. He escaped the bad, the very bad outcome of the tee shot, which would have been. Um, I'll let it putt first. And, and he, he drilled drains it. it. He drains it. So we'll see updated odds from Bet365 here shortly. Uh, Graybo will be a bigger favorite than he was previously as he does now have a one-stroke lead. And we're on to hole number five, which is also an aceable hole here, and I think a lot of the pros like that because this is a, a true skill putt. It is. This is this is a hole that I would say is a regular golfer. Um, it's, an, it's a nice little right-to-left break. It feels pretty straightforward. It feels more. It feels like a, a, a hole where I can kind of just pick my line and hit it. And I think that's what a lot of the pros love about it is that if you do hit your shot, it's very likely to go in. Joey's uh, moving some debris out of the way here. That Mo was moving his, his ball mark. Yes. <laughs> uh, we look at the outright winner odds right now. Grable minus 350, Rutledge plus 250 with the one-stroke lead. That's, that seems pretty fair to me yep. at this point. Yep, agreed. He's going to put it out. I don't believe he's going for a bank. I think he's going to just put it out about two cups to the right mm -hmm. and let the break tape, the let, let it break. So that's a different line than I think, because he lined up on the left-hand side there, and he, you he, you won't see that a lot. He did, but he th that putt is going to break pretty hard right to left at yep. the hole, yep. and he I think he just a little firm. He was, call, a little he was calling for it to turn, right. yeah, so it was one of the two, a little bit firm or a little bit out there to the right. But so far, Grable looks composed per usual, and uh, Rutledge is going to look to to pull it all square here right now. He's t wasting no time. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's taking the same line. Yeah, they're out to the left quite a bit right now. That's also a little firm. Let's see if it turns. Yeah, a little bit firm there as well. It's tough. It's tough to manage the speed on these courses. Again, he's going to consult the book for his, uh, his deuce putt here as the rules official does move it eight inches from the wall, which is standard rules. I'll tell you, Rob, I, this is a tricky, tricky putt in the sense to get the speed right because... You know, you were putting up towards the clubhouse, which is uphill. The first four holes are all downhill, kind of, and away from the clubhouse. And so this is, it feels like it should be up more uphill than it is. Right. Rutledge right in front of us here. He drains it as well. The two putts are great for these pros. And the one thing about Rutledge, we talked to him a little bit earlier today. And he said his love for the game is fueled by being able to compete against the world's best putters. He's a true competitor, always wants to be against the best. And we're getting a great matchup here so far as we move on to hole six, which I have dubbed the Volcano. It is a featured hole with a hole-in-one odd set at half. Talked about this in the pregame show as well, Rufus, but this could be aceable or it could get out of hand real quick. This is all about the speed. These guys can hit that line, but it's all about getting the speed right. Yep. And... Grable told me himself, his words, do not leave this one short. You leave Put it, it short, there. you leave it short, you're, you're making a, a three at best. God, I love those pants on Grable right now. He missed to the left. Let's and see that's going to that's gonna go off to the Ooh. left. And you know what? It, it did not come back down the hill at all. So he's right up against that collar. That's... This is tough because he's putting downhill, but then it's going to go up that ridge again, so it's really hard to get that speed right. At this point, 
a lot of people would be happy with a three. I don't think Joey Grable would be happy with a three here. That's exactly where I was going. I don't think Grable is one of those that would be happy with a three here. But this could be catastrophic. If you hit this next putt long and it rolls back down the hill, you're looking at a potential of four, five. We've seen worse than that before, and that's, this is amongst pros. This is a very challenging hole. He sits back and thinks about this one right now. You know, this is a putt he has a lot of practice in, though, because he knows how detrimental um, or how dangerous being short in that first putt is. Looking for the deuce here. Testy putt. That is, that's a big, big error there. Yes, and this is what can happen back and down the we're hill. we're going all the way back. And he knows it. But you know what? He's been here before, okay. and he's going to regroup. You can almost feel it. You know what? I, like, I've, I've watched this guy putt now. WPL 1, 2. I saw him in the match. And he's always calm and composed, but he really took a lot of time over that putt. And you could see, even as he was shuffling his feet about to putt it there, this is a scary, scary hole. He was he was trying to he was putting to make it, not to lag it up. Yeah. You know, when he hit the ball out of bounds in uh, in his last competition against Gary Hester to, to go down, what, three strokes three strokes that. on the back nine, you know, he responded absolutely well with and ended up winning that match. Oh, oh. oh no. Now he gets the rock bounce, but this is still going to trickle all the way down. So he's going to step off and regroup. He's laughing right now, but he's, he's sure. suffering. He's suffering right now. And I'm not sure I've ever seen this from him. Well, it, it's this is mini mini putt, and it can happen. It's hot out there. It's a lot of pressure on these guys, but haven't seen this out of Grable before. Grable with his fourth here on number six. He has to get this there. He knows it. He did, and he does. So he's going to cart a five here, and this is going to drastically affect the live odds on this match after and before Michael Rutledge putts. But this is a big one right now. Rutledge knows this is a huge opportunity as Grable moves to one under through six holes. Or one over. One over, excuse me. Good good correction. Uh, Rutledge, two-stroke lead. I'm going to be honest, Rob. I did not see that coming. Neither did I. Um, you know... Grable, again, is a, is a guy that's pretty calm and collected. You typically don't see those big numbers out of him, but anyone can put up a big number on this hole, and Rutledge is on the tee. Great and speed, great let's speed. Let's see if it hangs up. Wow. But it still will not hang up. Unlucky. He, I'm going to tell you what, though. I like his putt from there a little better than I liked Grable's putt. I totally agree with you here. I think this is one that they do practice a lot more as well. He's going to consult his his card as well. But this is one that they're more familiar with. Yeah, he's a little he's a little closer to that to the severe slope because you know you're putting downhill and then up that ridge. The other thing is this is going to move hard to his left right at the hole. This putt for to maintain a two-stroke lead. Get up there, and he missed it to the left, it, but he's going to do his tap and bogey, and that's that's just fine. You saw that hard break there. I did. Went I out think to the left. He's upset with himself, but he's going to have one stroke lead through six. Here I think he three. knew after after what happened to Joey, he was content to, to just not make the big mistake there, and he was a little tentative for that reason. These head-to-head -head formats have a lot of pressure on them. Um, we can attest to it, having done it, and this doesn't mean anything. These guys are playing for a lot of recognition as well. So hole number six, stay tuned for Olivia Prokopova and Rainy Statham. Afterwards, we'll see how that goes, but there's also going to be a finals, and that's going to be a hole that decides a lot as we move on to hole number seven here, Rufus. No way. Now, he went into the cup, which... I have experience with going out of bounds on this hole today. It's happened in practice a couple times today as well. So there may be a change here to just take your guarantee, not a guaranteed to, never want to say that, but it's one of those where it's like 
take your easier putt or your easier chance at two rather than, you know, a possible blow-up hole. Well, I think Michael being in the lead probably informed that decision a little bit. Right. Now, what's really interesting is the live betting market before this putt Ooh. right now. As he steps off, he's going to... These guys swiping are, some sweat. It's hot out there. It's really humid. It is. It is disgustingly humid. I would say out here, and and this has cooled off a little bit compared to earlier today. Testy number two putt here, and he pulled oh. it to the pushed it to the right. He did the same thing, Rob. I, I from where he was, I actually, I actually three putted from there, and so it is. The putt looks like it's going to break right to left a little, and but it doesn't break nearly as much as you think. Will be very interesting to see. We still obviously have Grable on this hole as well. Rutledge is not completed. He still has this this, this three for a bogey. Uh, but Grable was still favored in the match at minus 130, heading into hole number seven here. So very interesting. It's pretty much close to a pick em right now. And he drained okay. it. He drained it. So three, he's not going to be happy with himself as he picks it up out of the hole. He moves to one over. So we do have a tie here. here the question is, what is Joey going to do here now Now that he saw Michael three-putt? He's not playing he's, the bounce. He's not. He's going for the cup and trying to get it down there. And They're both playing conservatively here. They, they really are. Um, I, 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 I'll be very interested to ask, but look at this putt. That's that he's, not, he's not happy with that. I can guarantee no. you that. Because there's a ton of randomness when it goes into the little tunnel. When we were playing, Rob, mine came out really short like that, too. And that is a tough, tough putt. Yeah. And it's one that Joey himself said he's not used to. Right. And normally it's going to go off to the left of the hole, maybe on that sort of sidewalk, which you get free relief because it's the handicap ramp. But I, I don't think he wanted to have eight feet left here. At the end of nine holes, we will have JT Tilly on the course interviewing both of these putters. And it'll be really interesting to, to understand their mindset because Joey did not play that putt in practice today he played the double banker up at the top where you line up on the left side of the hole hit it hard to the right uh but you do bring an out of bounds well, randomness think, into play as well i think he saw what happened when you played that <laughs> right we, we I, both made four on this hole we both did make a four on this hole earlier big putt here for grable on number seven And he pushed it out to the right as well. There's some. There, I missed this some, right. This I mean, is a I, misleading putt right here. I will say I feel a little more vindicated. Yes. Although I missed the one coming back. But Now, for those that don't know and are watching for the first time, this course we're playing, the Tennessee Shine Invitational, Mossy Creek Mini Golf Course, is an extremely challenging course. A lot of these putters would just take a par, 36. Now, they obviously want to do better than in a lot of instances, but... You have some very, very br breaking second putts here that you, you don't see it on camera, but you're seeing it right now with the pros that are out there, Rufus. And, and you know what? That was one that didn't break, and it fooled them because there are so many that break. This is very different, Rob, than the Aloha course, that we, which we played last month, where the second putts are almost exclusively dead flat, and, you, and there's not a lot of trouble. There's a lot of, there's a lot of subtle breaks here, too and little spines in the carpet. Hole number eight, one of my favorite holes on the course, and Michael Rutledge is going to play the aggressive line up the middle, splashes into the water, the water, up on top of the hill. Can he get the bank into the hole? Oh, stays right up there, but that was a solid putt. You can go left, you can go straight, you, you can go, go right. right. This is, in my opinion, the essence of mini putt right here, and uh, you'll see some really, really interesting lines over the course of the day as Rutledge taps in here. If we look at the outright winner market, Grable's still in the lead uh, in terms of odds at minus 130, but it's this is this is looking like a coin flip as we head to, to Grable on the eighth hole. Right and Grable's now. not going to play over the water. What's interesting to me is that Rutledge believes going over the water actually eliminates a lot of the bad luck that can come into play because he believes if you hit it off those bricks, you're really at the mercy of the bounce. And so you, it's very unpredictable, whereas over the water, um, he hit bounces into that concrete uh, it's he thinks that there's less chance of a disaster going over the water, which is a little counterintuitive. I I'm not sure I agree, frankly. I, I talked to Rainy Statham about that earlier today, and he's not a fan of the bricks either. As Grable gets it up and there, we, we have a pedestrian in the way, but we do have him atop the hill. So there is break on this putt as well. And not only is there break for a right-handed putter. It's not a good stance. It is one of the worst stances you can have out here. Um, but Rob, it's a pretty short one. I don't think. I think he's. I think he's plenty happy with that. Absolutely. 
as are his fans in the that would get the gallery in the purple there. shorts. Yeah. Want to remind everyone out there that the outright winner that you're seeing for Bet365 right now is just for this matchup, not for the full tournament. So be ple uh, please be aware of that when wagering on the event as we move to hole number nine here, which, candidly, two is a very common score at hole number nine here. I mean, I, I somehow made it three, but still, I think all these guys are like, you know, I, th I think this is their least favorite hole. What are the bogey and uh, ace percentages on this hole out of curiosity? This Rufus? is going to be interesting. Um, we have zero, well, none of these guys have aced this hole. Okay. Uh, the or sorry, none of these guys have bogeyed this hole. The, the field percentage on bogeys is, is 6%, but this actually has an ace percentage of 0%. Nobody has aced this hole in competition. Someone did yell get in the hole out there, which seems yeah. extremely unlikely. Uh, it just, But you know what? This is a great leave. It's an oh. easy putt. Uh, should be able to put it in right from there. But ultimately, you got to remember, we are playing a course that is played by the general public as well. There are some holes like this, people that just come in, put it out there, rolls down the water. It's a little bit gimmicky, but ultimately it is part of the course, and you still do have to make the two. You have to make the two. Well, I'm still a little bitter because <laughs> mine, you know, it, 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 you know, you put it in the water like that, and you, you're at the mercy of luck, and mine uh, left me like a four-footer with some break, whereas yours went up to a few inches. So The mistake I've seen people make here is hitting the first putt too hard, and it comes back down into the water and goes out of bounds. But the crowd is cheering. This one lands in roughly the same spot as Grable is down there, laughing it up. Let's see if he can put this one in quickly, and there it is. Okay, we are at the end of nine holes here. As these guys round the turn, we are going to catch up with them very shortly, get their thoughts on what has happened so far and what has been a very, very entertaining matchup. Michael Rutledge is one over par, Joey Grable is two over par and we did have that blow up hole on number six for joey Graybull. it's been a pretty fascinating matchup so far rufus early thoughts here it has it, it, you know i was very surprised at how hole six went that to me was the biggest surprise of, of the tournament i i didn't think joey Graybull was capable of a blow up like that but he's respond well i i would say he's responded well but then he three putted the the the, the subsequent hole when he had a chance to, to make that stroke back up. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can gather himself. We're going to see what the pros think of how they've played so far. We head out back onto the course with JT Tilly standing by with Joey Grable and Michael Rutherford. Mike, great match so far, buddy. You're doing fantastic. There was a lot of trash talk coming from Joey before the match. And, uh, man, i got to say, you've really shut him up so far. How are you feeling about your performance on the first nine? Well, I'd like to have done a little bit better, but I'm doing good enough. So that's all we need. Yeah, just one point is enough, right? That's, that's all. Number one, I'll be fine. Uh, Joey, now I'm laying it on a little bit thick. It was Mike that was talking all the trash. We know this. Uh, he's got you on the ropes here, man. How you feeling with Mike bullying you into the, the first of the, the second half of the match? I still feel pretty good about it. Nine holes left, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I've seen you pull some out in the last few holes of the match. What, are you just trying to be dramatic here, or is Mike really beating the crap out of you in this match? Uh, Mike's beating the crap out of me, but I don't quit. It's well deserved. it. Folks, it's been a fantastic first nine. The second nine are going to be fantastic because these two guys have lost 25 pounds of water and they're very fatigued. It's 137 degrees out here at Mossy Creek. Let's go back to the booth with Roger and Scott. It, it is pretty hot out here. I'm not going to lie. It is pretty hot. Um, for those who've seen me on camera, the glasses are actually fogging up from the humidity. That is actually how hot it is out here. And we look at the outright odds. Going into hole number 10, Rufus, minus 115 both ways. Probably as close a matchup as we could have asked for right now with the early favorite, Joey Grable, one stroke behind into the to back half here. What did you think of the back nine relative to the front nine when we played that earlier today? Well, Roger, we, we are entering the most difficult stretch of golf, of miniature golf, actually. This is called the Rapids. Mm. It, it, is, it, it sells itself as the toughest four-hole stretch in miniature golf. And there, I'm going to be honest, I don't love it because I have not performed well on it. <laughs> right. Hole number 13 especially. You can, it, a tin cup moment is, you know, very, very possible here. So, Yeah, absolutely. Hole 11 is part of this where you get, you get a, a putt where you kind of got to play a bank shot. It can go weird off the rock. So this is really going to test quality putting over these next four holes, but 
there is a luck element as well. There is, but I think Joey likes the fact that these are going to be tougher because that, I think, tougher holes make helps the guy trailing. Yes. You know, there's more variance. There's a greater chance for a comeback. Very good point for those who are looking to bet Grable at minus 115. The 10th hole here is a bank shot, and a lot of this uh, will filter back down. So we might see some very interesting second putts here if they don't hit their line on the first putt. It's all about the speed, too. If you're too soft, it's gonna, it, it'll, it will break more left across that hole, and you have a tough second putt. Rutledge hits it with pace, which a lot of the pros will do, but it's below the hole, as we see. I'm not sure that's the leave he wants. And That is not the leave he wants. come down, and this is kind of what I'm talking about. He's got lucky that that rough patch there stopped the ball, but this is a putt that a lot of these pros will practice because it's a very, very common landing spot on hole number 10. And that's not to say that he will make it necessarily, but it is one of those putts that even though it's testy, they expect to make because it's a very common leave. They do. I think he may be a little nervous there. That was a tentative stroke, and that, I mean, you should, that, that was definitely a tentative stroke. Yep. And he hits it with pace, and yeah. he drains it. Right-hand side of the cup. He drains it. And he's got a, a little ball picker at the end of his putter. I, I like I, that. I, I've talked about this before. I think that's a pro move. I, I, uh, now, I'm going to sound, I'm only 36 years old here, so I don't want to sound like, you know, someone who's. I mean, I'm the grandpa here at 37. But actually picking up the ball out of the hole sometimes, especially on a day like this, you, you actually feel it. As sad as that sounds, you actually do feel it. And let's see if Joey Grable is feeling it here on hole number 10, playing that bank. Rob, this is not an ace hole, really. 2.61%. It's challenging. Neither of these golfers have aced it in competition. I think they're, 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 both these guys are happy with He teams. hit it harder, and this is, again, let's That's a great filter leave. down, filter down, and oh. he's going to be telling it to stop. And it I did. think that's I, it's still virtually a tap-in, but I'll, I'll say this, Rob. Let's see if he would, aims outside to the right. No, I think, I think he's keeping it inside the, hole, inside the cup. But, Rob, that ball will, would not have come back nearly as much this morning and he drains it center cup as we look at the outright winner market Rutledge minus 130 Grable plus 100 this is the first time in a while we've seen Rutledge as the favorite and we go to hole number 11 which will happen right in front of us or right to our right over here and this one is uh it's it's interesting you got to get the right kick the right bounces and Let's see what line these guys play here, Rufus. Rob, it's interesting that the lines shifted after, and, and actually we have another move towards Rutledge. He's now minus 140, and, and Grable's plus 110, and I think I think that's because hole 10 has a 29% bogey or worse percentage, so the fact that a push there, you know, now you only have eight holes remaining, and um, there's just less time to be caught. Now let's see if he gets the kick there. That's Ooh. a good kick. That is a good one. That's a very, very nice putt right there. Great putt. Great, Great putt. putt. Tap in, too. He'll be happy with that, considering he does have a one-stroke lead. I will say this. We do try to remain impartial as commentators. We do love both of these guys. The thought of Grable as an underdog is always appealing to me, especially when we do have so much golf, mini golf left to play here. But Rutledge, he's on his game right now. I mean... He's, he hit a great putt there, and again, this is a very challenging hole. You might see that score at plus one and be like, well, it, it's tough. Grable is over par in competition on this 11th hole. Wow. So. Wow. Now he's lined up right in the middle. Or slightly this isn't where he was lined up during a practice round, I don't believe. And, I mean, he, if he gets the kick, that's a little too hard maybe. Yeah. He, yep. But, again, decent putt. He'd be decent. You know, That's he's, got, he's got to make up a stroke at some point, but he'll be happy with that. Do you think our odds? Do you think Rutledge is going to become a bigger favorite after this? I do. It's now seven holes, seven holes left. With each hole that played. passes, he's got to be slightly more favored. Now, again, you know, there's specific holes that are more aceable than others. If we look at the the, rem the remainder of this course, Rufus, where are we more likely to see aces, or where are we more, more likely to see big numbers? So the big ace holes are 15, 16, and 17. And by big, I just mean over 11%. So 16 is the only one that's a, a true ace hole at 19.4%. And remember, we did have odds for hole number 11 there in terms of hole in one set at half, and that hits the under. So we're over on hole number two, under on six and seven. We got the middle cup and just missed the hole there. 
Um, this is, in my opinion, the hardest deuce putts on the entire course. And again, I these guys so. will have practiced it, but he's still going to pull out his book here, Will Rutledge, and uh, make sure that he's got the right line because this can turn into a big number very quickly. It can, and 32% and of the field in competition has bogeyed this hole or worse. Interestingly, Joey Grable has never bogeyed it. There are some holes that I think both me and you can attest to, Rufus, having played these courses that the pros have played, where sometimes you just feel it. It's your hole. You go up there, you're very confident, and there's some holes you go up to, and you're frankly crapping your pants as you're standing at the tee box. Now I'm not suggesting the pros would do this, but there are there is something to certain holes favoring certain putters. It's true. Speaking of crapping your pants, that was a nice deuce there. There was a nice deuce right there as Rutledge moves to minus 150 at bet 365. Grable looking for the answer, looking to stay in this, wants to just keep it tight. There's still plenty of plenty of mini golf to play here. Rob, what, what do you think the winning score is going to be right now? What would you set that number at? That's a very, very good question with the holes that we have coming up. And we're going to have another this similar is a, deuce putt here. This is a tough deuce putt. It's, it's certainly a big right-to-left break. Looking at the holes that we do have coming up here, 13 and 14 are, are very low ace percentages. 15, 16, 17, you have a chance on those holes. So that's where we might see Joey a little bit more aggressive trying to make up a stroke and those will be our playoff holes by the way for everyone out there in case we do end up in a tie 15 sudden death then 16 then 17 but ultimately i think where we're around right now is probably very similar to where we might finish i think a winner at even par is i think even par would be a good score okay joey with the second putt Ooh, drained it inside the left left hand side of the cup one thing i love about joey's putting is that he's not a guy that's just gonna tap it and lead it down a line he's gonna put it in the back of the cup as we come here to hole number 13 and rufus this is one that you played a ton today i'm gonna say this is the toughest hole on the course and this hole has changed a lot as the as it's gotten hotter and the, the course has gotten faster yeah um there's there's two places there's two strategies here you can lay up or go for it but actually both do the the, the laying up does not come with uh without risk i will and let's I I mean, i'm guessing we're going to see a layup here from rutledge and i i'm also guessing we will see one from grable who tends to lay up here and that's kind that's of the layup you want layup. that's exactly the one that you want and i'll tell you why he's close enough i don't know if you can see it on tv but there's a big big slope and he's close enough to that slope that this becomes a much easier putt if you're a little bit further away it 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 is it's hard because the angle of that hill is not exactly in line with the cup. Rutledge so. might be a good bet on the outright market just in the sense that I do think Grable right now will play this. Oh, wow. Is he going to play a different I line? think he's going for it. Wow. No, no he's still hit the up. layup. Still hit the layup, which is, you know what? That's that's the shot he wants to hit. It's Ooh. a very consistent two for him. I mean, this. Look at this, though. It's still moving. Okay. Grable Good. is in this spot nine out of ten times on this hole. This is just like one that is very 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 uh, consistent for him as we're going to head out to hole 14 here shortly they get through that amen corner that's the comparison to the masters at augusta i'm aware those, th those that don't know out there but we have a one stroke lead for michael rutledge and we still have five more holes to play and some very challenging holes here heading down the stretch rob when when players are feeling the pressure Sometimes they can get going too fast. And the first thing to go is decision-making. And I think we saw with Joey Grable there, he's completely composed. He's trailing, but he still has his head on his shoulders and is making prudent decisions. Yep. I think that was a smart one. You don't have to panic. Now, this is a high-variance hole, I would say, because you do have to put it over the little sidewalk there, and you can get some weird kicks. That's a common landing spot where Rutledge is right now, to the right of the hole. Um he's I ended up on the left of the hole this day, uh, today, which is unheard of. Just, like, doesn't happen. I want to see what's in that yardage book, by the way. I, I'd be very I curious had seen that see. yardage book is today. It a, do we have topographical maps? We, we have. It was beyond my understanding of golf. That was the complexity of that yardage book. Oh. oh we have a big mistake there. That is That's, one. That opens this right back up. And that, right back up. that wasn't that that wasn't a misread or anything i think that was just a quick stroke yep and i think 
I think that the brick wall that he or the bricks he, being against those bricks played a role. I, I do. I think too. he would have taken a little bit of a bigger backstroke. He just accelerated too quickly through that. Now let's see if he can keep his composure here. This is tough, and this has been the one knock on Rutledge. He's a very good putter, makes a ton of aces, but he has been known to have the big hole. And this is this is a much tougher putt. I, I missed this one earlier, and it did leak out to the right. So let's see if it leaks out to the right here as well. He did not look. At, he didn't consult his book. Okay, that's, that's a, why, that's that's a great why he didn't consult his book, Rufus. He, he, he knew it. He knew that one. Right down the pipe. But he does drop to two over here. Opens the door for Grable. That is his first bogey on that hole, and that is on the back nine. Only one hole is is bogeyed less so that's a, a very big unforced error and i think we're going to see the outright market shift towards grable being the favorite and, and it is it minus has. 140 it's almost like you're an odds maker rufus yeah almost grable has not you know what's funny is that rutledge had aced that hole four out of ten times grable has never aced it in competition so he's got to be kicking himself there's something about us saying Grable has not aced this hole that let's turns see. into him acing the hole. So let's see if he's got a chance here. Do we do the announcers, Jinx? Well, ooh, missed it out to the right as well. This is a trickier putt than it looks. In the second, but also the first, because again, you do have the variance of the bounce off of that sidewalk, and it can go in either direction. So you can hit your line as consistently as you want, but the ball's not going to go the same way every single time. Rob, seeing these guys playing once like makes me want to get back out there again. Uh, it, it really does. It, it it's really an does. addiction. It is. It is a. It is great to watch these guys perform. And okay. he had the same, that stroke. That was right? the same putt. That yep. was the same putt that Rutledge had. Well, no this, problem there. This was dubbed the backyard brawl, and that's because both putter, putters are from Tennessee here for the Tennessee Shine uh, Invitational. Invitational, excuse me. This fifteenth hole here is aceable. It is. And I saw Joey make this one over 50% of the time today. This is one that he's very confident in. The key is you need to, the key is to hit, hit, hit a firm first putt. Yes. Excuse me. If, if you do not hit it firm enough and bounce it as hard enough off that back wall. Um, see, and you can see oh. how unhappy he is there because this is a hole that he, he loves. He took a different line there than I expected. I th he might have pulled that a little bit yep. because uh, you want to hit the crack between the bricks at the top of the hill, and he went kind of to the left of that. Yep. But you know what? This looks still like an easy second putt here. It's hard for us to see in the broadcast booth. We see the putter's reaction a lot of times. I have no idea if it was a bad bounce off, but he is really upset, and you can tell that, I mean, he played that hole so well today, and uh, I know what that feeling is like as... Grable's still minus 175 on the outright market, but Rutledge does have a chance here. I've not seen Grable show such emotion. Yep. I mean, these guys want to win. They're competitors. They they're friends, but they're competitors, and they want to win. All right. That. Okay. That does it get the kick? No. Same spot as Grable. So. That should be a tap Deuce in as well. Yep. Should be, should be pretty easy. It does have a slight movement on it, but he's not going to take too much time with it. As he I think that's a pretty flat one. Yep. Three, three holes to go. Could we get a playoff? Could we get a playoff? It's it's seeming increasingly likely because 17 and 18 are challenging for ace holes and 16 coming up here, one of our favorite holes. I call it the ride the rail hole, Rufus. This is one that Rutledge does not, on, on paper, his statistics don't look good here. Only 10% ace hole, 40% for Grable. But I saw Rutledge practicing this, and he was making draining the hole once. He actually took a different line than he had in the past. It's This one is all about speed, though. I agree. We look at the graphic on screen here, which is hugging it very tightly to the right, but we will see different putters play this from a different starting position, all with the same putt in mind, but it's the combo of the of the speed and the line. They're going to hit it parallel to that brick wall. Can yes. I call it a brick wall? What yeah, it, what, a what's brick. it called? Well, it's a wall of bricks, a wall so of might bricks. as well call it okay. a brick wall. It's hit it uh, parallel to the brick wall, Yeah. and it's going to funnel to the left. You do not want to actually hit it off the brick wall. Correct. You want to let the... But, that might be it. You want to do yeah. it like that. Yeah, wow. That's exactly how you want to do it. And you know what? Grable, Grable is, so is now clutch. five for eleven in acing that hole in competition here. So when he when it matters, this guy is. I don't know how he does it, Rufus. I really don't. Well, do you think that emotion from last hole carried over? Very possible. He channeled it. He channeled the emotion. He has a lot of Derek Jeter like qualities. He can't play baseball. White male. He's no. just, well, he's just he's, he's just clutch. Is what I'm getting at. 
Okay, this is a big one here. And wow, oh, the he answer. Responds. The answer. Michael, the answer, Rutledge. Uh, Rutledge. What did I tell you? He, the stats weren't, didn't back up what I said, but I saw him in practice. He looked confident on it. He had a confident stroke. And I think after Grable hold that, it becomes that much harder. We come up to our final featured hole here, hole number 17. Will we see a hole in one? We saw zero on hole six, zero on hole 11, which were lined at half. Those cashed on the under. And we also have our round hole in one set at five and a half. We have five aces right now. So this is a big one. And uh, this is a very, very interesting hole as well as we will play between the rocks. This is the rock hole. They will play between the rocks. Got it through. It's pacey. And this, is, left, this might going to come back. This wow. Might, I think I think it's cooled down a little bit because wow, Rob, I hit that same putt. It went to the, it went to that exact same spot and it rolled back to I would say ten feet, twelve feet in front of the cup. Yep. So and that's been happening all I day. Think, yep. I think we're in the shade now. I yep. think that's changed it. And so, I, I used to make fun of you for saying, oh, you know, it's heating up. It's changing how the course is playing. Now you but know. It You've is, played it. It is 100% true. 100%. Different times of day, the course will play differently. Rutledge with a chance to go up here on hole number 17. Between the rocks is the line that the pros prefer for the hole-in-one. It's not the safe shot. It's pretty safe for these, these, through, these guys. That looks a little good. light. And that's oh, going to leave a lot a, light. That's going to leave... A, a long the, second putt. Another tentative stroke. I think he had one of those on, was it hole 10? Yep. Where he didn't hit it hard enough and left it short. And he made that second putt. But this this one is a tougher, a much tougher second putt. And he has a good 10 feet left. This will be a pressure-filled putt without a doubt. As, what will we say? How many feet will you think that is right there? Eight footer maybe? I, I would say 10. 10, 10 footer. And Rob, you all cannot see this, but Rob is pulling out his, his yardage book, which I'm curious to see. Yeah, so uh, left lip. Well, this is not, this is, I haven't even practiced this putt. That's okay. that, that's what I'm, I'm kind of going on here. I think put it straight. Yeah. When in, when I, in I, doubt, I missed, center cup. I missed it left. Big putt here. We could see the odds trade change dramatically if Rutledge does not put this in the back of the hole. And he missed it. He missed it left, left too. And, and you it's know coming what? back. Okay, now it's now it's doing what mine did. Yep. And now, how far will it come? It'll come down there, and he knows oh. he's in trouble. That's a little bit frustrating, obviously, for Michael Rutledge. Played a good round. He There's something it. about Joey Grable in these head-to-head -head matchups where the guy, and it's not over yet by any stretch of the imagination. We still have to play number 18, which is a tough hole to ace, but also brings bogeys into play. But there's something about this guy down the stretch where we see it time and time again. It's not, whether it's head-to-head -head matchup, stroke play against an entire field, he just finds a way. And and uh, Rutledge puts some heat on that one to the back of the hole as we're heading into number 18 here, Rufus. You know what? Grable aced four of his last five holes at Aloha to win. Yep. There is something about the last few holes and the pressure that brings out the best in him. It really is. And it's... And I'll say I'll say it. A lot of these other guys can crumble under pressure. I mean, we saw Gary Hester yep. make an uncharacteristic error. We saw a tentative putt there by Rutledge. Yep. It's you know, tough. I think I think he's at his best when the pressure is at his highest. Well, I mean, it's cho totally changed my perspective on sports. It really has because I I didn't really think that this was a thing until I actually got out on these courses and experienced it myself. But when you're in a close match, not even when you're in a close match, you could be up by three on a, on a hole 16, 17, 18, and you would still experience some level of pressure. And Grable seems to be that one guy where down the stretch, he just doesn't. He's Brooks Kepka. I think he experiences it, but I think it sharpens his focus. Very possible. Good and, comparison. and he performs better. He actually mentioned Brooks Kepka to us out today as well on the, on the course. So He's just going to lag this baby. He's going to lag this up. He, he was saying when, when you were on the tee, why doesn't Rob just lag it up? And I said, it's not that easy. We, if, if I could lag it up on every single hole, I would. Of course. That's I mean, why I'm not him. So, I mean, he's going to force Rutledge to make an ace on this hole. What's the ace percentage on this hole, Rufus? It's, I believe it's incredibly 2. low. 2.8%. Neither of these guys have aced yet. Yeah. So. so Rutledge is going to need a 28 percenter to extend this match into a playoff. I can guarantee you Rutledge is not leaving this one short. And you know what? You guar he's, guarantee he's, he If he... If he He's going to potentially use that backboard, too. He wants to give it two shots to go in because 
There is no tomorrow if it doesn't go in. There is no there, tomorrow. There is no regards, later today for him. If regards it from go Tennessee in. Shine Invitational. There is no tomorrow. Does this have a chance? Wow. Let's see. Come on. It's going to come, it come back. back down. It is not going to come it's back. It's stuck. That it's was stuck. a great. That was a great putt. But and Joey Grable will, will win this head-to-head -head matchup, which was deemed or dubbed the backyard brawl between these two great competitors. These guys do like each other quite a bit. They don't right now. They do. They do. I, I obviously you can ex you can see the frust. I mean, Rutledge is probably talking about a putt here right now, which he missed. But ultimately, Joey does get it done, and we'll move on to the finals. And you know, this was a, a, a great affair, great affair. Um, but ultimately, we see it time and time again. Grable just is able to get it done down the stretch. He needs to play the putt here. We, oh, because we, we, we do have, have betting we odds have betting on this. Yeah, hundred percent. It's total. Uh, there, there are. Their totals, there's there's something, I'm sure. So he does have to play the putt so that 18 are complete. He's doing the same thing I did. I had that same putt left as well. And, and, I, and I did the sa I missed it the same way, too. Well, that, that is, that honest, is a is very is challenging putt, extremely. It's so fast that you, you either have an option of tapping it and just hoping, or you hit it hard, and let's see oh. if this comes back down again. He's not happy right now. We, I mean, I wouldn't be as well, but he's going to have to get a measurement here. The match is already over, um, but we do need to see 18 from both of our putters. Grable's going to go on to the finals here. Where he probably will be a favorite in all likelihood. It'll be interesting. I would be very interested to see the line between Grable and Prokopova. And Olivia. Be Olivia Prokopova, because um, she participated in WPL and WPL. WPL number one, number two. She was favored in both of those events, didn't perform well. If you pull the majority of people in the World Putting League, this is just speculation, but I would guess that they think that she's the best putter around. So that this will be interesting altogether, but if we do get it done. First matchup goes to Joey Grable and Olivia Prokopova and Rady Statham will be next on the course, but ultimately uh, just a few uncharacteristic a few uncharacteristic bad holes for a pro. Rutledge uh, gave it all. I mean, the last hole doesn't really count with, doesn't no. matter with that four as he finishes four over. It's going to look on the final scorecard like a, a three stroke win for a Grable, which it is. Seems like a blowout, but it really wasn't. And we're going to get his thoughts and Joey Grable's thoughts with JT Tilly out on the 18th hole. Joey, Mike, what a battle. What a fantastic match. I know it's a bittersweet win for Joey. He, he leaned over to me right at the end there, and he said, I, I don't think I won that match. He said, I think Mike gave it to me. How do you feel about that? Well, now I had some really awkward D spots. Um, what is it, 14? That was crazy. That thing broke four inches left and a foot. And it was wild. I mean, it was a fantastic match. It, there were really a lot, of, a lot of nice moments. But in the end, I mean, you know, they, they pay me money to razz you guys and kind of pitch you against each other. But the truth is, it, it, there's a lot of love between these two competitors. Would you agree with that? Oh, yes, most definitely. Most yeah, definitely. There's a lot of respect. I mean, I've had a lot of conversations. Step on in here, lady. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations uh, with you about how much respect you have for Mike. And, and uh, you know, most guys would celebrate their win. But instead, uh, you, you kind of felt bad to see your buddy struggling at the end there, right? Yes, sir. I mean, I love Mike. Is, I love Mike. I mean, and I don't want to see him struggle. when the, If I win these things, I won't both of us be playing really well and neither one of us played really well that game. Answer. Michael, the answer, Rutledge. 